Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. Chris McGee, James Worthy, Robert Ori, Brez will be joining us soon. We got uh, Ali and Trudell working the post game via Zoom. Lakers lose to the Blazers. They're going to fall to 2-2 two and two on the season. Heading out on the road here coming up for the first road trip of the season. Uh, one of these early season games, guys, where they looked great in spurts, uh, but it was all Portland down the stretch. A little sloppy on the Lakers' part. Yeah, I mean, when you're the champions and when you've uh, beaten Portland and, you know, just, I don't know, 85, 90 days ago, uh, you know, you're the team to beat. Portland's a different team this year. They're healthier. They got healthier toward the end of the bubble, but they have their, their full strength now. And the key tonight, I think, was just the bench. Uh, the Lakers, without Caruso, uh, only scored, I think, 23, 24 points compared to what Trent was able to do in that bench. They had like maybe 45, 47 points. And when you don't have AD at full, you know, capacity, you're going to have some problems. And I thought, you know, they had glimpses, but glimpses don't work against Portland because they have those dynamic guards. And then they had a supporting cast that they came to play tonight. So, yeah, they're going to have to look at some video and make some corrections. Yeah, the thing about that is they, they held uh, Damon Little in check for that first half. And, but... They held him in check, but they let Trent get away from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the second half, Litter got loose because he was worried about Trent, but Trent was still able to knock down some threes. The three ball really hurt the Lakers. Mm -hmm. like when you have guys like you used to have last season, you could run them off that three-point line. And the, the night AD didn't look like he had the energy, like that calf was kind of bottom, so they weren't able to run Portland off the three-point line and pass, so they was able to knock down more threes. I think you guys bring up great points. Plus 18 from three. For Portland, James, you mentioned the bench. The Lakers are number one in the league, but tonight it's 45-23 in favor of Portland. 28 of those are coming from Gary yeah. Trent Jr. And you're right, Rob. I mean, Dame kind of smelled it in that fourth quarter. Trent got him there, and, and he's one of the best closers uh, in the game for a reason. You look at those three guards, CJ, Dame, and Gary Trent Jr. They have 15 threes between them. Trent Jr. had seven of them, James. Billy mentioned this during broadcast. He only played six minutes on Saturday night. He had zero points. Tonight, he came to play. Well, when you talk about a dynamic duo, some nights they have a dynamic trio. Because when, Trent, when Trent's going like that, when Damon was out of the game, it was almost as if he was in the game because Trent was doing exactly what a Damian does. So, you know, that's a, that's a dangerous player. And you can't allow that third guy, you know, to dominate as if he, you know, does it every night. So, uh, without Caruso, I, I think Caruso's a big part of their defense. Not that he could stop anybody, but he's active hands, steals, deflections. Uh, but it just got away from him. You know, they had three hot guards tonight. And I got to tell you, Norcus, didn't, he didn't score a lot of points. Mm. But he was key. He had some big buckets uh, down the stretch and got some layups. So, uh, they played well, better than the Lakers down the stretch. Before you get in there, Rob, because he mentioned Nurkic. Nurkic had 12 rebounds. Uh, Cantor had 14. Mm -hmm. That's 26 rebounds between their two bigs. Yeah, but you know, it's, that's how it's going to be. When you have guys that you know exactly what they're going to do, mm -hmm. I think these guys have been together a long time, even though Cantor has been in and out. But he's been Portland enough. He took them to the playoffs a couple years back. So he knows what those guards are going to do. And they position themselves perfectly for rebounds. And when you have that, that makes it easy. Like, if you look at the Lakers play, everybody's outside the paint. Our biggest guy, Marcus Gasol, outside the paint. So you don't really get that many rebounds. But the way Portland plays, they crash the boards, they drive, they penetrate, they kick. And the bigs know their role. Yeah. When you know your role, it's easy to play the game. Crash the boards and try to get your own shots. Kind of missed uh, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee tonight. Marcus Saul is big, but not as active as Dwight, not as physical. So you can see, you know, the difference uh, than last year and this year. Yeah, Marcus All only playing 19 minutes, uh, not playing there in the uh, late in the fourth quarter. Listen, defensively, we, we, we talked about the Lakers kind of, they're going to have to find their way, giving up 33 points in the fourth quarter. Um, they're still trying to figure out their coverages, uh, different combinations. Uh, but it starts with the turnovers, too, on the offensive end, James. Some sloppy play. Lakers getting beaten transition. Tonight, 15 turnovers for 18 points for Portland. Yeah, I can't allow that to happen with a quick team that gets up and down. I thought Hood played a great game, but the Lakers got to take better care of the basketball. You know, when, when you're playing against active hands like these guys, they're not big, but they do a good job of collapsing when you drive, deflections, and then they're out doing this. So, yeah, you got to take care of the basketball. Uh, can't turn it over. Can't make marginal passes that you think are there. And then before you know it, they're intercepting and going down for buckets. You know, one of the keys I thought in the first half was, okay, they shot 11 free throws in the first half. They only shot four in the second half. And if you'd have told me that, I was like, okay, the Lakers played well because they played better defense. But 
they couldn't stop that three ball like we just talked about. But that, that's, the, you know, you look at this game, it's signs of improvement. There's so much room to improve, improve this early in the season because you look at the connection that, you look at film, you look at the connection that they're not having with Montrez. Montrez is a guy who's been averaging almost 20 points a game. Tonight, he wasn't used enough for me because when you're not scoring like that, Go inside to a guy like Montrez. I know you have AD, who's a $20 million man, and all this kind of stuff, but sometimes guys like Montrez have an advantage. You know, I'm curious, guys. I feel like in the past, uh, Lakers 2-2 two and two with this kind of a team, losing a game at home to Portland. Uh, maybe there's people tilting a little bit. You're starting to overthink this. I, there's just a different feeling. It's a short off season. Lakers are the champs. It's almost like I mean, we talked a lot about in the preseason, James. You kind of expect... Nights like this. You can't overthink it. I mean, the Lakers have a big target on their back, too. They are the champions. Portland has always played well against the Lakers. So you have to consider that, you know, they're a healthier team than they were during regular season. So, you know, you're not going to win every game. The Lakers, I'm sure they think they could have played better. But uh, it's not anything to panic about. They'll come back, try to recover. It was a back-to-back -back game. Uh, they were a little short on their bench as well. So, don't panic, but you have to be aware of it. Yeah, Lakers are now 2-2, two and two, and they're heading out on the road for 4-2 in San Antonio, 2 in Memphis. Let's get you to the highlights. We'll take you out to Staples Center. LeBron James ends it. Lakers fall to Portland again in L.A. Portland on a nice little run. Taking care of business when they come to Los Angeles. A little over 31, 10 of 16. Gary Trent Jr., 28, 7 of 11 from 3. C.J. with 20. He also had 11 assists. And LeBron James, in a season high, 29 points. He also added nine rebounds and six assists. So about 90 minutes before tip-off, found out that Alex Caruso would not play against the Blazers, unrelated to an injury. Coach Frank Vogel could only disclose that Caruso's absence fell under the NBA's health and safety protocols. We will continue monitoring the situation uh, as more info gets released. We bring in the insider uh, Brez, Brez, what's going on? Tell us a little more about this situation and the NBA's health and safety protocols. Yeah, the NBA takes this very seriously. Last month, they published a manual detailing all the rules and regulations regarding COVID. It was 134 pages, so a lot of things to go through there. As for Caruso, we don't have all the details as to the how and why, but here's what we do know. He obviously missed the game tonight. Uh, two possibilities likely here. Uh, he maybe came into contact with someone who had COVID. Uh, in which case he would have to quarantine for seven days, which would mean he would miss tonight's game and three games on the upcoming road trip. The other possibility is he tested positive for it, in which case he would be out for 10 days with no exercise. Then he could exercise individually for two more days after that, and then you kind of have your testing from there. So we don't know the details. Uh, we, it could be just a contact tracing thing. And the Lakers are not the only team going through this. The Houston Rockets have four guys who have been out for, for almost a week now, uh, including uh, some pretty good players, uh, Eric Gordon, uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Those guys have been out uh, since opening night because they came into contact with someone who did have COVID. Good stuff from you, Brez. Uh, James, I feel like we've had a lot of conversations. It's been in our life over the last nine months. Uh, yeah. The bubble, uh, the NBA did an incredible job. We've seen NFL, college sports over the last four months, how they've been able to navigate through this, some tough times, players missing games. NBA's just getting started. Yeah. Big game. Uh, how do you feel navigating through this is, is going to be? It's going to be tough for every team. It's going to be difficult because, you know, Murphy's Law is just going to come into play. If you're, if you're out of that bubble and you're traveling on airplanes, you're going to different cities, uh, you're home in Los Angeles, you're going to the grocery store, you're doing things that you were not doing, the chances are uh, you're going to run into it at some point. I mean, it is hard to just stay home and go to practice. I, I stay home, I go outside, I play golf, I come to work, that's about it. These guys, they have to go to the training facility, they have to go to airports, they have to do a lot of things and also keep up with their other activities, non-basketball related, foundations, things of that nature. No, they're doing a lot of stuff virtually, but it's gonna be a huge challenge uh, for the NBA because now they fall under the same circumstances as the NFL, college sports, and all the other entities. I mean, Rob, we just had this conversation uh, off camera the last time you were here. You, have, you, you, you haven't been to Houston in a long time, right? Like, I mean, you just stay home yes. and, and it's hard. <laughs> it's hard, you know, I think about, I, I got a grandson now. Yeah, and I haven't, haven't seen, seen him yet. yet. <laughs> I haven't seen him yet because you, you know, COVID keeps you stuck in the house and it, 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 it 
kind of deters you from doing things, even though you want to do them. But you know the safety of yourself, your family, and the, the elders of your family. You don't want to get anybody sick. And I, I think about how hard it is for these guys to do this because they're traveling. Just think about if you'd have played in the game tonight. All the people he came in contact from the refs, and it's, that's how it spreads. And you, you want people to stay safe, and you want people to be responsible and wear masks and be wash their hands and, you know, have antibacterial. You know, you laugh. You, you get in my truck right now, it's about five packages of antibacterial Good. wipes. Good Every time you. I do some, I'm wiping myself yeah. down. And, and I'm just, you know, they, they it's have not families. for me. It's, it's, for like, you know, it's, it's for my wife who has a heart condition. Yeah. So I'm more worried about her than I am myself and, and, and my kids. And so you you, you got to be safe. And it's, it's best to have this precaution. And it basically boils down to this. This is going to be the one year in the NBA where the bench is so important because you never know who's going to get COVID. Yeah, one last note. Uh, Caruso, the only Laker who did not play tonight because of COVID protocols. So maybe just a one-off scenario. Maybe he knew somebody, uh, if that's the case. Uh, it's definitely not a Houston Rockets type of situation at, at this point. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, let's hear from Frank Vogel. He's speaking with Mike and the media. Hey, Frank, what did you see after you got to, up to that 13-point lead in the first quarter? Did you see something switch? Well, I, you know, I thought we came out with great energy, obviously, and, uh, you know, sort of jumped on them, uh, built up that early lead. Um, you know, we just weren't able to sustain it, you know, for whatever reason. Portland's a very good team, and, you know, they made, they made, made their, uh, their counters with their energy and uh, made their runs. And, you know, when they made their runs, we just weren't able to sustain the energy we began the game with. Frank, A.D. got some post-ups in the second half. Seemed like he got going a little bit. I just wondered what you thought of his game overall in that first half especially. Yeah, I just think we didn't get uh, didn't do a good enough job making sure he was involved in the offense uh, in the first half. You know, and um, you know we just got to do a bit better job of that. But certainly uh, a little bit better in the second half. Um, you know, just one of those nights. We were, we were kind of stuck in mud a little bit. You know, I don't know if we could play last night or whatever. Um, but after, like I said, after we came out strong to start, start to start out of the gates, uh, just had trouble sustaining that 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 energy and intensity. Is there any early thoughts on closing lineups? Uh, I know it's something that, that fluctuated from game to game last season. Uh, but anything on tonight in that group that you saw for most of the fourth quarter? Yeah, well, we're a new team, so you know we're going to continue to look at uh, different things. Uh, we can play with with Mark or, or Trez uh, finishing. Um, you know, we have the ability to, to slide AD over the five. I hadn't hadn't had Keith in the game because we wanted to have a ball handler in there with uh, with Braun during that stretch where Keith, Keith normally plays. So, you know, he would have been cold to put him in late. And, um, you know, I, I like the lineup that we had out there, but we just weren't able to get the job done. Dave? Frank, staying on AD, you mentioned that it was kind of on the team to get him better looks. Was there anything on him that he could have done to put himself in a better position, come to the ball more often? Uh, you know, was it was it just on the team, or was there anything that he could have done as well? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it really you know starts with uh, with the group. You know, and we just weren't moving the ball that that well. You know, um, you know, I got to make sure that that I get him the ball in in, in opportunities where he can be aggressive. Because uh, when we do that, we know he's uh, he's aggressive and carries a big load for us. So. Uh, it's really on the group. Bill? Hey, Frank. Um, yeah, obviously, Portland has really dynamic guards, so maybe this is more noticeable given the matchup. But just what did you feel like you missed with Alex not out there tonight? Uh, we miss Alex. You know, Alex has great energy. Uh, you know, he's, he's one of our most vocal guys, even when he's not in the game. You know, just talking out coverages, and he's like an assistant coach over there, you know, and, and you know, helping guys through uh, defending actions. and. Um, you know, he's a big part of what we do, obviously. So, you know, we certainly missed his energy tonight. And we'll take three more questions. Kyle Yeah, Frank, um, just Mark Gasol seemed like he had some good defensive moments, but didn't make the passing influence he had. And, and Trez, um, you know, it seemed like he, he was still trying to find his score himself even late to the game. What's sort of the balance of trying to find some of those key situations where each guy can play, and then how did you tonight sort of make a grade on choosing which of those guys to put in the closing lineup? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we're going to have the ability to, to go with either one of those guys or to slide AD at the five, like we talked about. And, um, you know, we just, uh, you know, obviously Trez had a, had a strong night last night. I liked his ability, you know, with, uh, with what they were doing defensively. Um, 
you know, with, with uh, Trez being able to flash uh, to the rim on AD's post-ups or with him rolling um, in, the, uh, in the pick and roll game, you know, but that group just wasn't able to get the, the job done. Like I said, it's early in the season. You know, we'll continue to look at a lot of different combinations. Last two, Jovan. Hey Frank, um, you, you guys decided to play up in your pick and roll coverage is because of Dame and CJ's ability to you know shoot off the dribble. Uh, I'm curious how you felt that the bigs did in their defensive coverages uh, as well as in the fourth quarter and maybe some of those breakdowns. Yeah, I thought they were pretty good for the first time in our in our scheme. You know, like I said, we haven't had a lot a whole lot of practice time. Obviously, what we did in the, in the playoffs, you have a, you know whole two weeks to to lock into one opponent. Um, this is the second night of a back to back, so there's not a lot of reps to, you know, for, for new guys to get, get involved, but I thought they did a good job. Um, you know, I think the bigger thing more than, more than you know, Dame's going to be Dame, CJ's, you know, always tough to guard, but we didn't, we didn't get Gary Trent under control. You know, I think that was one of the biggest things with, uh, you know, with the bench. You know, he came in and lit us up, and, you know, if you look at the, the box score, that's where uh, the separation really existed, you know, and, and a plus minus, from a plus minus standpoint, is, uh, you know, their, their bench. Combinations, not just their bench, because obviously, you know, Dame or CJ is out there, just like we have LeBron or or, or Anthony out there. But those minutes is, is where they uh, sort of separated themselves. Last question, Dan. Frank, um, you talked a little bit about rim protection last night. Obviously, it's not going to be the same as it was a year ago when you lose guys like Javale and Dwight. I think you led the league in blocks last year. Um, can you do that other ways? Is it with you know, Trez is a charge taker. Are there, are there kind of different ways to protect the rim? And, and how do you think that's going to sort of play out here as this team kind of figures out what it's going to do defensively? Yeah, I don't think we should be any any uh, worse than we were last year. You know, there's going to be high expectation of, of protecting the basket. Uh, and you just said it right there, Trez with, with his charge taking and shot blocking. Um, you know, he's a good shot blocker too. And, you know, obviously uh, Mark Mark was a, is a former defensive player of the year. So, um yeah, we have everything we need to get the job done there. Thank you so much, Coach. Yeah. He uses his best ability. KCP scored 14 points in the loss, making 4 or 5 for 3. Speaking with Allie Clifton. You know, coming into tonight, obviously, back into the back-to-back, -back, you guys got off to a great start in the first, opened up the third on a nice run. How would you describe kind of what made the difference down the stretch, what Portland was able to do to close this one out? Um, I think what the Portland did, they turned up their intensity, you know, uh, the pressure. Uh, they caused, they forced turnovers for us, um, and you know they made shots on the other end. When it comes to obviously making shots, you got a guy like Dame that you guys are all accustomed to, and CJ. How does it change the game plan when you got a guy like Gary Trent finding his rhythm in which he did tonight, 28 off the bench? Uh, it changes a lot. You know, uh, we know our game plan was coming in for CJ and Dame, knowing they was gonna get all the shots up, uh, but. You know, uh, Gary Trent came in and he was on tonight. You know, I don't, I don't even think he missed a three. Um, but, you know, things like that, uh, we got to stop. You know, uh, we can't let uh, a third guy, you know, get, at least get over 25, 30, uh, knowing that Dame and CJ is going to uh, do that as well. Last one for me, Contavious. Obviously, you guys as a team take a lot of pride on the defensive end of the floor. We know, of course, a shortened off season, not a whole lot of time in training camp. Uh, how would you describe kind of where you guys are on that and uh, this early in the season and kind of where you guys need to evolve the most? Um, I feel like our communication need to get better. You know, uh, we still lack uh, that on the defensive end because uh, uh, new guys, you know, trying to figure it out and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, but I feel like it's, it's our chemistry is, is building fast, as, you know, as we expected. You know, we still learning each other. Um, but, you know, we just look forward to just just getting that chemistry together. All right, uh, Rob, you're up again. Little Access again? 360. Yes, you are. Again, we're going to run it back with a LeBron all-around game. You know what? Sometimes you got to do it, do it three times. Trying you know to get you saying? some shots up. Oh, three I know, times man. You know, give me the rock, man. Give me the rock. All right, I got a little 360 showing LeBron had an all-around game early in the stage on a back-to-back, -back, on a ball maker. Right here, you see LeBron just waiting. You know what? He's reading the defense. All eyes are on the ball. All eyes are on KCP. LeBron has a clear path to a back door. He doesn't see him, but you know he's in position for a rebound. Boom. Tap in right there. 
Offensive rebound and two points. Here we go. Off to the races right here for Portland. But you know what? LeBron says, I'm going to get back. You know, I'm going to track you. Do you know who I am? I'm going to get up there and block this shot because that's what I do. That's who I am. Should have been the best player of the year. Not you, Mark. Here we go right here. Now he's set the pick and roll. <laughs> now he's in the corner, right? You know, same thing. You're going to turn your head on me. AD, back give me the rock. Cut. I got a back court. Back door, I got a lane right here. Nobody's going to jump with me because they know they get dunked on. Right there, LeBron with an easy two. Here we're off to the races again. LeBron's tracking in that trail position. You know what? I see you, AD. I'm going to get you back right here with an over-the-top pass for a little soft dunk by AD. LeBron does a little bit of everything. Right here, we're going to show you coming down with the rock, seeing everything. You know what? He's going to penetrate. You know what? I'm still the bully and the big bad man on the block. He goes up and over. Canter for an easy two right there and looks at the bench. He should have flexed on him, but he didn't. So sometimes you got to do an Access 360 to show you what the king can do. He does it all. He's been doing it, um, you know, his whole career. You know, I wonder if he and AD decided to play tonight because they wanted to send a message to Portland. It didn't happen. But, you know, he's a guy that, you know, he's a professional. Didn't have to play tonight. Probably could have taken a loads management game after spraining his ankle again. Comes out, leads the team. Yeah. Uh, it's what he does. He's, he leads by, by example. True leader. True guy that runs yeah. the team and shows you, hey, I'm not going to be about it. I'm going to show you about it. 999 consecutive games with 10 or more points. 1,261 total fourth all buckets. time. Dennis Schroeder, continue. It's a rough one. Yeah. There's nothing worse than the first 20 seconds of a severe oh. sprained ankle. You just you don't know whether it's broken, it's painful. Uh, it, it, there's so much stuff going on in your head. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the game's great young stars, you hate to see him kind of wheeled off like he was. No. MRI expected tomorrow, according to reports. Like, no, no, a couple no games factors. coming up here with the... Uh, Memphis Grizzlies on that yeah. road trip. Okay, so the Nets lost that one. Brez, we got you in here. Let's talk Dennis Schroeder. Yeah. By the way, one thing I, I you notice, um, he had 11 points in the, in the second quarter. He had 11 points in the, in the third. He, he ends up with 24. You know, LeBron was out of that game in that third. And he kind of takes over. Lakers are going to be okay on nights when they needed that other score, Brez. Yep. Maybe LeBron's out. Maybe AD's out. He, he, that change of pace, his ability to score from whether it's a floater or a three, he, he's a special kind of player. Yeah, in fact, I thought tonight was going to be that night. I think Rob and I talked about this before the game. We thought uh, LeBron might sit out tonight's game, just kind of rest that sore ankle. He's turned it a couple times in, in the first few games of the season. And it, it wouldn't be a big deal because Schroeder would jump in and, and take over. Obviously, they play different positions, uh, different, different physiques and whatnot, but he's the guy who can run in offense. He did it for several years in Atlanta, and he did it for a very good second unit in OKC last season. Uh, so LeBron ended up playing tonight, and still Schroeder had a very good game. No reason for the Lakers to panic if and when LeBron does rest like Kyrie and KD did tonight. And, and you know what, Brez, to be honest with you, he only had two shots in the fourth quarter when, when, when I think we kind of wanted him to have the ball a little bit more because he was cooking. Yeah, he was cooking. The thing about that is when you're going up against another good guard, sometimes that brings the best out of you. Mm -hmm. Him going up against Dame, he was going at him. You notice he was picking him up full court. Yep. And that's a sign that yeah, I'm engaged. I mean, I'm going to play you tough. I'm, I'm going to go at you and make you work. And I think it caused Dame to have a little problems in the first half, but you readjusted and Schroeder did also. But they both had good games. You love to see good guard play like this. Four assists tonight. I think one of the things he has to do, I agree with Rob on this one, he's got to find a way to have a connection with Montrez because Montrez picks and he rolls. That's all he does. And there's a, there's a pocket there where he's got to find him. He's also got to find that relationship. And I think he's trying to do that yes. with AD. He tried that lob with him one time. It wasn't quite, you know, AD likes it at the rim. So I, I, as, as well as he's playing right now, as much of an asset he's going to be, he's going to have to find those two connections as a point guard from, from, from that position. Yeah, James, you hit on it earlier. There were a couple times where Montrez yeah. would set a screen and roll to the basket, and they wouldn't really look for him. So I think they, the Lakers kind of got away from a hot player in Schroeder in the fourth quarter tonight, and a few times Trez wasn't really rewarded for the hard work he was doing as far as setting picks. All right, guys, after AS. Look. Point for the first quarter. Both teams just settled in. Um, we know we played a very good team, um, so we know it was going to be a blowout tonight, and we had to win the game. Uh, to about 48 minutes, so uh, we got to a g really good start, but you know both teams settled in and just came down to execution. Did you see anything with the, the different in this game from the last couple, uh, LeBron? Did anything different on the floor with the way you guys were flowing? No, I thought um, you know I thought we had some great some great looks, um, you know that that didn't go down for us that actually went down for us last couple games, um, especially Kuz looks. 
Uh, he had some great looks tonight, and I think the one that he made by their bench was the toughest one out of all the shots that he uh, had. And we had some good looks around the rim that didn't go in, um, you know, and uh, they capitalized off off, um, off some of our mistakes that we had offensively. Thanks. Hey. LeBron, Frank said that he didn't feel like the team got a, enough good looks for Anthony. Uh, he thought it was more on the team and getting him incorporated than anything Anthony did. What did you make of AD's night? Um, we always got to do a better job of uh, finding him, looking for him, um, you know, and that's, um, that's on us. Hey LeBron, I actually have an off-court question today. Um, you know, you said before that you had to kind of un expect the unexpected in 2020. When you think about, um, you know, what you've done this year, had to adapt with I promise and more than a vote. What do you? What are some of your lessons and, and takeaways from 2020 and, and how it's forced you to evolve those, those efforts? Um, that no matter what's going on, um, you can always still make an impact. Um, no matter, I mean, the world has literally been completely shut down for for months and months and months. And um, but I, I've been able to, um, and my team been able to still try to hit home um, in our community, um, still try to make an impact. Uh, obviously, keeping in mind, um, you know, the um, you know COVID and, and everything that's going on with the pandemic. Um, you know, but you know, just trying to be um, as proactive, as trying to be as, as resourceful. Um, trying to be as inspirational um, and also continue to empower people uh, like we were able to do with more than more than a vote, um, getting people out to understand their power um, that they have, their power and their right, uh, rightfully so. Um, so, um, you know, even through a, a, a global pandemic, um, you can still make an impact for the greater of good. <clears throat> uh, last two questions, Dan. LeBron, you guys are going to head out on a road trip for the first time. I mean, the, the preseason, I guess. But um, what's it like to get ready to travel the country right now? Um, and then, and also, I guess, from a basketball standpoint, how unique is it going to be to be playing these kind of couplets, these little mini series against teams, the way you're going to do here in uh, San Antonio, Memphis? Well, it's going to be different. It's going to be very challenging just to hit the road. Um, you know, which we haven't done much. I mean, obviously the Phoenix trip, but you know, it was a preseason game. You didn't want to put too much into it, but you know, now this is the kind of you know, it's the real deal where all the games count. So it's going to be very uh, different. We we believe, um, you know, going down to Texas and then headed to Tennessee. Um, you know, we we'll see what you know counties are, what's the rules and regulations in certain counties compared to ours. Um, but more importantly, just trying to stay safe, stay uh, stay healthy, uh, so we could be available for the games. Um, and, um, you know, go out and play our game. You know, go out and play Laker basketball and uh, see what goes from there. LeBron James, I feel like this is a nightly occurrence. Just another milestone. Look at Cap with 1,509 games with 10 points or more. He's number one all time. Carl Malone, two. Dirk is three. And there's LeBron James passing Kevin Garnett, fourth all time. He also has 999 straight game so against san antonio he can make it a thousand with 10 plus points or more let's go back to staples ad speaking with the media ad how's the calf feeling um and how comfortable were you out there tonight it seemed like it took a little bit to, to kind of find the flow of the game uh calf feeling good um excuse me anytime you take you know game off and you want to I don't want to try to force my way back into the rhythm. You know, the team played well last night, and I just tried to um, fit in. Um, you know, knowing that the focus is going to be on me, uh, you know, Carlton and guard me and try to double team and things like that. So just trying to make the right plays and the right reads. Uh, I like the shots I got early on, you know, went in and out. Um, but just, you know, have to be more aggressive to start the game. Uh, but the cap, overall, the cap is fine. Mike Trudeau. Hey, Anthony, just looking at these first four games, just how are you feeling about what they have been like to play in? Obviously, you didn't play last game, but based on the expectation and your body and, and just getting into the rhythm of the season? It's been good. Um, the first four or well, three out of four for me has been really good. Um, you know, I think that 
uh, we're going to be better. Um, you know, we're still learning each other while we're still trying to win games. Um, Marcus playing well, playing well. We're still trying to get West involved with the team, get him acclimated. <clears throat> uh, you know, so I think we're going to be fine. Dennis is finding his way. Trash is finding his way. Um, and guys are still trying to um, get back into to game rhythm, um, you know, from a short season. So I think we'll be fine. I mean, it's a marathon. There's only four games. Uh, you know, we're two and two. We play, um, you know, four great teams. You know, even though Minnesota, you know, didn't, um, you know, have Cat and, and, and didn't make the playoffs last year. You know, they're a team that has been um, pretty good to start, the, to start the season. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we're fine. We're going to be fine. We're going to figure it out and, and continue to get better. Dave? AD, we know you can impact the game a variety of ways. You had the assist tonight. We all saw that backdoor bounce pass. You had to LeBron for the dunk. But you scored 13. Uh, you've had nine games now as a Laker where you scored 15 or less, and the Lakers are three and six in those games. Does, there, does that say anything about – the type of offense that you know this need this team needs and expects out of you. Yeah, that's score the ball. Um, simple as that. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to make plays and, and like I say, find a rhythm, get back with the team. Uh, especially since they played so well yesterday. You know, you never want to come back and you know guys just force feeding you and, and trying to get you the ball um, because you can make shots. So I try to you know find my rhythm back into the system. Um, but it just got to be more aggressive. Just go out there and score the basketball. As uh, simple as that. Uh, whatever it takes uh, to win a game. And like I said, we had some guys going early. You know, Kenny makes a couple threes. Dennis, you know, got going, going to the basket. Uh, <clears throat> I know anytime I got the ball, they were trying to double team, and I was just trying to make the right plays. Um, you know, guys made shots. Uh, but, you know, I, I got up to a slow start. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I can't let that affect how you know that continue to, how I continue to play and I just gotta you know, be able to score the ball. First road trip of the year coming up. San Antonio, that's Rob's old stomping grounds. You still got your big mansion down there? Uh, no. Yeah? no. No. Robbie, you wish no. you could go to uh, Blue uh, no. Rose, get some walk? No. 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 Stay home. Go down to the river walk. Yeah. No. Good job, gentlemen. <laughs> Mike Bresnahan, James Worthy, Robert Ory, couple access three sixes, Allie Clifton, Mike Trudell. Thanks for watching. So